Hello everybody, your host Kenny Mradi here, the other host is Ahmed Salem, and today we're going to be talking about DNA fingerprinting. So to start off, the restriction fragment length polymorphism, or the RFLP, is any variation in the DNA between individuals revealed by restriction enzymes that cut DNA into fragments of different lengths in consequence of such variations. The steps for the RFLP process is that you extract DNA nuclei from white blood cells. Then you cut the DNA into fragments. The third thing is to use the agarose gel on the DNA. The fourth thing is to use an electric current to separate and spread the DNA segments by length. And finally, you use a sheet of nitrocellulose or nylon to strain the DNA. And as you can see, this diagram explicitly reveals the steps for the RFLP. So the next thing is the short tandem repeats and the PCR. Basically, the short tandem repeats, or the STR, analysis measures the exact number of repeating units, whilst differently, the PCR is used to discover the length of the short tandem repeats. Not to mention, STR analysis involves the extraction of nuclear DNA from cells in a sample. Certain regions of the DNA that are extracted are then amplified by the polymerase chain reaction. After amplification, a scientist performs gel electrophoresis to find out how many repeats of the STR sequence exist. Different dyes are used, which might be fluorescent dyes or alternately, silver straining should be used to provide the necessary visual assessment of the DNA. As far as the advantages go, the advantages of the STR over the RFLP is that STR is fast and automated, whereas RFLP could take up to one month to achieve. In addition, STR is easier to use and it's much cheaper than the RFLP. So let's talk about CODIS. CODIS was created in 1990 as a software pilot project by the FBI.01. The purpose of CODIS is to categorize and distinguish people's fingerprints. The function of CODIS is to analyze RFLP data and catalog it in a big database in the USA. CODIS is highly successful. As a result of its invention, it has produced hundreds of thousands of hits. Now, as far as the risks go, number one, the suspect and the DNA could be mixed up. Number two, since the program or software is online, it could be hacked easily. And as you can see in front of you, you have the 13 CODIS core STR loci with chromosomal positions. And don't be surprised at the fact that I mentioned that CODIS can be hacked easily, because three years ago, the PlayStation Network hackers accessed data of 77 million users. This was certainly an outrage. It took approximately 7 days for Sony to regain access to the PlayStation Network and quite possibly the hackers could do the same thing for CODIS because it's online and it's easy to hack. Story of Exonomy Habib Boher Abdel was convicted of rape in 1983. He was accused of raping a young white woman in a nature reserve after she had been separated from her husband. Abdel was picked up over four months later and identified by the victim in a show-up procedure. Though she had been informed by police that Abdel was the suspect, she failed initially to identify him as her assailant. The victim then viewed a photo of Abdel that was four years old. She returned to the show-up and eventually identified him as the perpetrator. Based on the victim's identification of Abdel and their evidence that allegedly failed to exclude him, the jury convicted him and he was sentenced to 20 years. Abdal's attorney, Elano Jackson Peel, continued to work on his case. She eventually contacted the Innocence Project. Peel's post-conviction efforts to secure the physical evidence for DNA testing were successful in 1993, but the tests were deemed inconclusive. Story of Exoneration Forensic science was used when a forensic analyst testified at Abdal's trial that he compared hairs from the crime scene with Abdal's hair and found them to be distinctively different. He has stayed in prison for 16 years and the real perpetrator has not been found until today. He also received $2 million as a compensation.